Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is my weekend blog post. In this post, we'll be talking a little bit about and looking at just some final thoughts about the Adobe Photoshop Elements 2019 release that just came out. We'll be looking at some new things coming up in the Luminar program, which are pretty interesting. Something about Google+, Plus, quick look at the Affinity Publisher beta program, and something else I just found interesting kind of fun on the internet. If you like my videos, don't forget to click on that like button and also click on share and share with your friends through social media. Both of those things can help my position on YouTube and that will help more people find these videos. Don't forget to click on subscribe and subscribe to this channel as well so you don't miss it on any of my videos in the future including all of my how-to videos. And speaking of how-to's, if you want to learn a lot more and really become expert at using the different programs that I teach here on YouTube, take a look at my complete training courses and you'll find links right down there in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and roll those credits and get to it. I'm sure by now you've all seen my video review of the new Adobe Elements 2019 program. And unfortunately, you know, wasn't that exciting, wasn't that interesting. Not really that much included that was new. Some things which look like they may have been interesting, if you scroll down just a little bit, is this auto creation, and I couldn't get that to happen at all. This Adobe Sensei AI technology, I didn't really didn't see anything from this. And Mr. Moonpie, aka Rich, from the followers there on YouTube, did a little bit of research on this and found that this actually was announced back in 2016 by Adobe. So they just included this here because they already had it and they wanted to just have something new to talk about in here. And again, if you watched my video, in my video review, you'll see that almost everything that's new, especially those four new guided edits, looks like they just copied the concepts from the last version of my training for Photoshop Elements 2018. I don't mind them copying my stuff. They've been doing that off and on for the past 20 years. No big deal. But since that looks like that's all they did was just copy my stuff, it means they really didn't spend any time, any attention to the program. They really kind of just tossed this update off. Hopefully, that's because they're working on something great coming out for the next version. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that they no longer care about Photoshop elements. We'll just have to see. But I'll be working on digging up and talking more about other programs that can be used to supplement Photoshop Elements and maybe in the future even replace Photoshop Elements if need be. So it won't be left out in the cold if Adobe dumps a program sometime in the future. Only positive thing there, even if they're thinking of that, is that Adobe is very slow on getting rid of programs that they no longer care about. So it, it could be several years, even if they're planning right now to phase it out, it could be several years for that even happens. I really wouldn't worry about anything like that right now but they may not be doing a lot of upgrading. That's the main problem here. We'll have to just have to see what happens next year. I'll be making sure though, very quickly here, next couple of weeks to do videos on all of those new features, specific how-to videos on all of those new features, so that you won't have to worry about getting upgrades for the training if you want to upgrade to the program. Also, from this point forward, all of my Photoshop Elements videos on YouTube will be done in version 2019. You won't see any difference. It's basically the same thing as 2018. But, you know, as always, I upgrade to the latest version, and that's the one that I use. So from here forward, it's all going to be in that 2019. If I happen to spot anything else happening in there, or if they do a little mid-season update or something, I'll talk about that, of course. Okay, let's talk about a different program now. Over here, this is Luminar. I've talked about this in the past. I've done a video on Luminar. I like this quite a bit. It's a fairly inexpensive, it's a very inexpensive program for what it does, and it really gives Photoshop Lightroom a run for its money. If you're really into photography, you want to have a lot of tools for photography, this is a great way to go. It's a one purchase, a one forever program. It's not like the Adobe subscription programs like with Lightroom. So you're not going to be paying every single month or every single year forever and ever to own the program. Just you know, buy it and there you go. The reason I bring this up is for a couple of things. There are two new updates coming up soon. The first one is coming out on November 1st. And if I scroll down here, people can actually see that. This is their ad page. And here we go. They have a new 
artificial intelligence sky enhancement tool which goes in finds the sky and allows you to adjust with the enhancement it comes in here at least get our slider control working in here you'll see this in just a second and there we go now you can see that working notice how it actually found the sky inside of all of these areas and then applied the adjustment to the whole sky again very interesting new tool here new trick and this is coming in in November 1st it's going to be an automatic update for anybody owning the current version of Luminar of course it'll also be in the next version as well and speaking of the next version they're adding something else in they're going to be adding in libraries into the Luminar program so that you can then work with libraries it'll add a huge amount of flexibility to the program and also allow Skylum who makes Luminar much easier time to come in and add in more features as well just by adding in updates and additional libraries so some really exciting news in here now I have a link for this of course on the page for this blog the materials page for this blog you can get that right to that link and you can if you want to find out more information about this they have an email list and they'll keep you up to date on what's happening nice program I like this program a lot it's actually quite powerful very quick on doing such things as finding your photos and bringing your photos up real nice program easily a good competitor for the Adobe Lightroom program so if you like working with photography this is not a bad choice if you want to stay away from the Adobe stuff another beta program that I wanted to talk about is right over here the Affinity Publisher public beta version 1.7.0 whatever now available and this is a free public beta so you can go ahead download this for free and give it a try now as soon as they do a next update on the beta the current beta will be canceled you'll have to re-download the next beta version I don't know when they're going to be coming out with this as an actual live program but it's really quite powerful it's a competitor program to the Adobe InDesign program and other programs like that like Microsoft Publisher kind of competitor to those let me bring it up right here this is the beta at this point this is the newest beta which I just downloaded for this video here and it's very very powerful it has everything that you would need for your standard page layout stuff this is one of the covers for one of my programs this happens to be the Corel Draw 8 that I brought up I imported this over from Adobe's InDesign which is where I do all of my work and since I have the Creative Cloud and I've been using an InDesign since you know forever practically but if you don't want to go the Adobe route, if you don't want to be paying for the Creative Cloud subscription, this is a very good alternative when it finally comes out as a full release. Now to get this over in here, to get this from InDesign into Affinity, it didn't import InDesign directly, but I did find that I could export as a PDF file with editing, which is one of your options over in InDesign, and then import that PDF file here, and I have full editing capability everything is brought in just fine so it worked out really nice you actually can get InDesign images InDesign files over into the Affinity Publisher as well and work on them over here so again if you don't want to be dealing with that mess of the subscription stuff over at Adobe this is going to be once it finally comes out a very good alternative to the Adobe InDesign program you know, enough of that let's go over here to Google something which was just announced this week is that Google is planning on getting rid of Google Plus. They're going to be shutting this down. I believe they said next August, so August 2019, Google Plus is going to be going away. Now, if you use Google Plus, it's a good time to go ahead and move on to some other social media. There were actually two main reasons why they shut this down. One was that they found a security glitch that exposed half a million users' data. That alone wouldn't be enough for them to shut down the, the service, except that it's not really that popular other reason of course is that the European Union just put in a bunch of new laws this summer on privacy everybody's having to catch up with those new European Union laws and they really affect social media and I just don't think that Google cares enough about Google Plus to bother with changing it updating it to solve this security glitch and also solve all of those issues over there with privacy so there's going to be dumping this in about a year from now so if you're using Google Plus a lot now is a good time to begin thinking of something else I'm not sure exactly how this is going to affect YouTube but you know the two are linked in together and you normally do things on YouTube based upon Google Plus or your Google Plus membership it's kind of automatic for instance if you want to change your little logo let's just switch over here to how to gurus this little thing right here you know your little ID on your YouTube channel this this thing in here 
is grabbed from Google Plus. That's a Google Plus image that they grab and stick over in here. You have to actually go over to Google Plus to change this. So that's going to have to be changed as well. So there are you know, potential for some of these things to affect how YouTube is handled as well once they decide to get rid of this thing and finally close this down. In any case, a bit of an unusual shock, I guess, for anybody who likes Google+, Plus, but there you go. Google+, Plus is going to be going away. Now, this is, article here is from CBS News. I found a bunch of articles from all the different news sites about this online, but I'll put this link on the page for this blog as well. And the last little thing I wanted to talk about here is kind of fun. This is the dangers of green screen. And again, I'll have this link on the support page for this video if you want to take a look at this actual article. It's on the Love What Matters website and blog. If you scroll down a little bit though, this is just about a lady who let her daughter go dressed to get her school photo in her favorite dress, which happened to be a nice green color. Unfortunately, they used a green screen in the background of the photos, so the green screen replaced the background and also replaced what was in the front. In this case, her dress. Kind of some fun stuff. If we scroll down a little bit here, you can see all the different changes. There's the original green dress right there, kind of sparkly sequiny thing. Scroll down a bit, and here's her dress looking like this bridge. Here's her dress with that road on it. Kind of neat. Here's her dress in a stars and stripes. Actually works out pretty well here, matching stars and stripes on her dress. And there's her dress as a field. Here's her dress in purple. And the little flag dress right there. This also works out very well, surprisingly enough. So again, just a little warning there about the old green screen technology and how it's being used nowadays in school photos. It's a, a great way to go if you want to easily separate out a foreground from its background. Just photograph it on green screen. You can then easily do that. That's basically what they're doing here. But if you're doing that, keep in mind that you are working with green for your alpha channel for separating out that channel and stay away from anything in green on your main subject. There you go, just again, just a fun little something in here kind of related to what we're doing with my channel, but definitely looking at some of the problems that are inherent with using things like green screens. Okay, well that finishes off my blog this week. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again next weekend. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.